Hi, welcome back to OMG The Cloud. So we've done a lot of virtual infrastructure stuff lately. One thing we're needing to have in place is some storage, right? We need, we need somewhere to store our block level storage. We need basic file share storage. We need NFS storage. You need those in your lab. You gotta have them. One really great way to go with in your lab environment is a product called TrueNAS. It used to be called FreeNAS for those out there that might remember that name, but it's the same product. They essentially, the company used to delineate their free and open source version as FreeNAS and their commercial product was called TrueNAS. And now they've combined that into a single product and they kind of have like a core edition, which is that open source version. And then they have their enterprise edition, uh, which is again, their commercial version. There's also a third one in there that's really interesting that I'm watching really closely. And this is TrueNAS Scale. Now this is an up and coming hyper-converged platform. So this will let you take a lot of the things that you can already do in TrueNAS today, which is you can put virtual machines on there. Mm, not really the best place to put your VMs, in my opinion. You can do some isolation with Jails, which is a free BSD way of doing isolation, application isolation. What's really interesting in, in the white papers on the new version of TrueNAS scale is the concept of doing a truly hyper-converged, highly available platform. So that would let you have your compute, your storage, all in one box and you can scale that out with multiple boxes for high availability. It would theoretically replicate your storage so you have a single storage pool across much how like vSAN works today or Ceph. Uh, and I, I think they're actually using Gluster, which is another type of kind of clustered file system. So we're definitely gonna be tracking that really closely. I'm excited about that. I do have it up and running my lab. A lot of the things do work today. I'm sort of waiting for it to mature a little bit more and for some of the storage-based things, the storage replication things to find their way into the GUI. They're not quite there yet. So anyway, with that sidebar out of the way, let's take a look at TrueNAS. I recommend you get this going in a VM. Also, what's sort of new to TrueNAS is if you dug around in the past, it was highly discouraged to run it virtualized in the past. It just really wasn't a good idea. They didn't like you to do it. But now though, if you take a look at the documentation for TrueNAS, you actually can virtualize. And here's a few considerations to be aware of. So I recommend you take a look at this. I'll throw a link to this documentation down in the description. There's just a few caveats. You wanna make sure that you're meeting the normal system requirements. They do highly recommend that if you're if you're gonna be using this for real storage, that you, you use pass-through for those disks. In a lab environment, I'm still gonna to stick to normal virtual disks. However, I am not going to run them in any sort of a RAID format. I think that is probably a bad idea to have the overhead of RAID writing across these virtual disks when they're really, really looking to find themselves a native block level device. We're just gonna give it a couple of disks, but they're not, like I said, they're not gonna be RAID. They're not gonna have any fault tolerance to them. This should not hold any sort of data that is completely critical for you. Uh, and, and if there's anything that you would even like to keep, you really better be backing these VMs up. So whatever virtualization you're running, whether it's VMware, whether it's Proxmox, whether it's something else, make sure you're backing this thing up if you want to not wake up one morning and have it just not work. So that's my, uh, that's my disclaimer. But anyway, with that, why don't we dive in? Let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Uh, I'm doing this in VMware. So I'm just gonna call this VM TrueNAS. And for the guest, go ahead and choose other. And this is gonna be FreeBSD12. I'm gonna give this two virtual CPUs. Uh, I wanna make sure this is on running on a single socket. This is definitely a sidebar, guys, but listen, if you don't know a lot about how multiple sockets work in virtualization, and understand how NUMA nodes work. If this is something you want me to cover in depth, please hit me up in the comments and let me know. I can do a whole series on this. Make sure that your virtualization workloads as far as your CPU types and how many sockets they're using, make sure it matches your underlying hardware. You're setting yourself up for spanning NUMA nodes, which is gonna kill your performance. Let's give it some memory. I'm gonna just gonna give it four gigs. I know that's pretty light. And let me go ahead and just add in, I'm just gonna add in one hard disk for now. We're gonna give this guy 100 gigs. I'm gonna thin provision this, and I'm gonna put this on the OMG servers VLAN. Next, and finish. Okay, and then with the VM created, we just need to attach the installation media to it. TrueNAS 12, there we go. Make sure you 
tick the connect box that doesn't go on by default, which is kind of annoying. And let's step through the installation. Get into that console. Hey, true NAS, all right. Installation here is just gonna be all default. So go ahead and just roll through this. Next, next, next. Yeah, see it's squawking about my memory. Hey, this is a lab, okay, so it's okay. If we have performance issues, crank that RAM up. I just don't wanna unnecessarily allocate memory in a, in a virtual lab. Uh, if it's not needed. So we'll start with four. We'll see how it feels. We're going to give it the eight gig disk. So it's user space bar, get into that and go ahead and give it your root password off and running. Just go ahead and let it run through that base installation. It takes a little bit of time. Almost done. Let it reboot. Reboot system. Go ahead and go back into your virtual machine and attach that drive if it's not already. So disconnect. I like to leave it at set a client device myself and let's see how it's doing. Starting up its services, and it landed on an IP in the subnet that I expected it to. So that's good. Now this is inside my lab, which is a nested PFSense firewall inside of my own network. So I'm going to have to create a NAT in order to reach this. If you're running this on your regular infrastructure and you can hit the subnet or the IP that it landed on directly, you can ignore the rest of this and go straight to the web UI. If you've been following along in our PFSense series, then you're gonna need to go ahead and do a NAT here. And I've already got a NAT in here for some other services, so I'm just gonna copy that, duplicate that guy, make it a little easier. I'm going to give this guy an obscure port, 9443, route it inbound to IP that it landed on, 10.1.10.100. The HTTPS interface apply, okay. If I hit the interface on my PFSense firewall, the NATed IP, aha, I get it. So this is of course a self-signed certificate. So we're gonna get stuff like this and that's okay. All right, so this is our logon. This is gonna be the password you set. So it'll be root and then you the password that you set. And then we're in. This is our basic TrueNAS installation. All we're gonna do here today is if we go to storage, pools, let's go ahead and build out some basic storage. So we're gonna use that one disk that we have, hit add under pools. We're gonna say create pool and we're gonna give it a name and let's hit suggest layout. Let's see what it thinks we're gonna do with exactly one disk. Not a lot of options, right? It's gonna warn us that we don't have any redundancy here and we know that we just have a single disk. So we're gonna have to check mark the force button here and confirm that and hit create. And it's gonna warn us about data loss, format that disk. So this gives us our basic file system. On top of here, I like to do individual data sets on top of it. I don't like to put a lot of stuff right on top of that root pool. So if I wanted to have some general file storage, I would, I would just hit the three dot menu at the end here, add data set, and we go ahead and fill out this information. So let's call this media, hit submit. All right, now we have media underneath there. And this also lets you do other things too, like set quotas. So for example, if you had a data set in here that was the target for your backups, you might wanna put a quota on that to make sure that something doesn't happen with your backups, they get too large and it just eats up all of your storage, okay? Now, again, this is a lab environment. This is a virtualized instance. We're certainly not gonna be targeting and storing any backups on here. We're just gonna use this for like NFS shares and things like that, that we'll definitely touch on. We can use that in our containers. We can use that for media storage. We can mount NFS targets directly inside of containers. And we're gonna do that all in here. So that's gonna be it for today on TrueNAS. Now, next time on our TrueNAS series, which will be next Wednesday, we're gonna go ahead and expand upon this. We're gonna make a second TrueNAS instance. We're gonna put it in our second site and if you've been following along in our PFSense series and you've created an IPsec tunnel between two virtualized sites, we're gonna add this TrueNAS server to that second site. We're gonna do replication between those two sites and I'll show you how all that works. So that's a really good way to use ZFS native snapshotting to get really good redundancy and provide offsite backup and rapid recovery. So it's really good to be able to know how those things work, how the snapshotting works. Uh, so we'll cover all that next week. And in our upcoming episode of the container series, which will be this coming Monday, we're gonna be standing up a Plex server. And that Plex server is gonna mount an NFS mount where it's gonna read its media from and the container itself is gonna mount that, not the host. And so I'm excited to show you that. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see. And thanks again, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.